There's a jig that I found online that works like this. You have a notched area here and you add a block of wood to the center of it. Now I have a gap that's 5 16 away from the top of the plate here. I'll take my router now and I'm going to unlock the base plate. I can place this on here. And now the bit is 5 16 away from the base plate. It's a pretty simple design. The only thing that I don't like about this system is, let's say I want to do something that's 3 16 away from the top or I want to do something that's 5 eighths away from the top. If you were to cut each one of those pieces out, you'd have a whole bunch of pieces that you'd have to store. I've got a jig here where it uses a spiral to do exactly the same thing that all these pieces do. Each blade is a 16th of an inch, and as you go down, you're dropping down a 16th of an inch. I'm gonna start with two blocks of wood. These are four inch by four inch. Now, honestly, you could do this with just one solid color, but I'm rotating each one of the blades to make it easier for me to later figure out which size I'm at. Before we slice these into 16th inch pieces, we're gonna create a hole in the center of it. You could do this with a drill press, but I'm gonna use my table saw. It makes it a little bit easier, I think. I'm gonna set my blade so that it's a half inch above the sled. I'll set my stop block at one and seven eighths. So if we're looking at these, the four inch that I'm going to use for the blades, the direction goes this way. So I'm gonna turn it on its side like this. I'll go ahead and make my first cut and I'll flip it, make the second cut and I'll do the same with the second block. When you're done, a quarter inch bolt should be able to fit inside the slot. Now we'll slice these into 16th inch slices and it has to be right on the money 16th of an inch. I'm gonna use my thin strip jig to slice six slices off of each one of these blocks. If I get my caliper out, I'm at 0.86, which means that each one of these is a little too big. I could cut these out. I could use a sander to try to sand it down just a little bit. Instead, I'm gonna run it through my planer. I'm gonna run a strip of double-sided tape on a straight piece of plywood. I'm using a very light double-sided tape. I'm gonna add some strips that are a little bit thicker so that I can kind of work my way down to it. I'm worried about chipping out the center pieces here. And now I'll run this through my planer until I can get this to the right size that I want. I found that if I use one of these really thin rulers, then I have a much better chance of getting these things out. We'll go ahead and check this now, 0.763. I need to be at 0.75. So I'm going to take a sanding block and I'm just going to kind of do a little bit on each side. Now we'll check it again and that's perfect. And you can see that I've stacked them every other color here as well as the inside of each hole going towards the next one. So I'll take the other ones and set them to the side and now I'll take the one piece. I'm going to measure over a quarter of an inch on that side. Then I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch on this side. And now I'll take a utility knife, I'm gonna cut a little notch out of it. I'll do that on both sides. The notch should be just big enough that you can get your pencil let into it. And it should look just like this. You can see the notch on either side. Now I'll take the template that I just made, I'll bring the second one down, and I'm gonna add a mark in both of those grooves. And when I remove this, you can see the notch on each side, that pencil mark. I'll set that one aside and I'll go to the next one. I'm just gonna move this over. So this is always facing this way and then however these come out is fine. That's the way they should be. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark it. And then I'll slide this piece on top of the other one and then I'll keep going. We'll take our template now and we're gonna measure over 3 eighths of an inch, which is gonna be the half on both sides. On the side with the notch, we're gonna measure up three quarters of an inch, and then we'll connect those two marks. Now we'll go ahead and cut along that line. 
This is the piece that will be at the very top. I'll take these 11 pieces now and I'm gonna pair them up. One, two, three, four, and five. We'll take the piece that we just cut and add it to the remaining piece. And now we're gonna take the pieces and we're going to glue them like this. So we want the smaller corner out on each one of these. So this is the way it's gonna be glued together. I just need to add a little bit of glue along here as well as a little bit of glue on this side. I'll put these on where the marks are. And this one is done. I'll go on to the next one. Now that these have dried, I'm gonna go ahead and add the next layer. I'll use a carriage bolt between the two. And again, we'll just pivot it right to that point the pencil point. And last time I did use a pencil mark, I found it to be a lot easier to add just a little slight pencil line. Instead of using C-clamps, I'm just gonna use some squeeze clamps. It's a lot more rigid. I don't have to worry about making sure it's compressed all the way across. And I'll let that one sit and go on to the next one. Just set these aside, let them dry. We'll finish up by adding the last three layers together. Now we'll give that a chance to dry. Okay, we've got a five and a quarter inch square piece of plywood here, as well as a five and a quarter inch square piece of acrylic. We wanna find the center of both. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plywood and find the center of it first by connecting the diagonals. Just in case the hole is not exactly center, I'll go ahead and put a mark on the plastic and the wood here on both sides. I wanna add a quarter inch machine screw that will go through the top, through the jig, and then out through the bottom. But because there's a cone shape, I need to add a cone shape to the plastic. Before I add the cone shape to my hole, I'm gonna make sure that my plastic and my wood line up with those marks. I know that this is my top right here. We'll want to add walls around our spiral that will act as a spacer between the acrylic and, and the base. It's really tempting to think that since our spiral is three quarters of an inch, that our walls should be three quarters of an inch as well. And that would be okay so long as the acrylic is exactly an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Acrylic, unfortunately, is rarely ever done in those types of measurements. My acrylic piece here is 0 0.20 thick. Adding this to the top of my box and measuring down from it will never give me the even 16th inch increments I want. To correct this, I'm gonna make the walls a little bit taller to account for the thinner acrylic. If we check this, my acrylic is about 0 0.20. That means I wanna raise this up 0.05. We've already determined that the spiral is 0.75 thick, so we wanna make it 0 0.80 thick. I've got a piece of pine here and I'm going to measure the, the height of it. And right now it's at 0.883. So I wanna reduce this by 0.083. I'm gonna do that with my thickness planer. Then I'll cut this down so that my walls are half of an inch thick and we'll go from there. All right, I went ahead and cut these. These are four and a quarter inches long and these are five and a quarter inches long. Now when I put this in the center, it's not going to reach the top of the plastic. To reach the top of the plastic with the spiral, I found a washer that was slightly over 0.05, and I just sanded it down a little bit, and now it's perfect. Now I'm gonna show you how I made this box. When I made this box, I assumed that my acrylic was a quarter of an inch. So I'll add spacers to the top of this to get it to where I want it to be, but I wish I would have known earlier so that I would have done the same with this. If you're not interested in how I made this box with the splines, you can go on to the next chapter. I'll add a spline to the edge by using my spline jig here. Now I'm gonna add glue to each one of the splines as well as the joints here. This is something that I really like about my spline jig. You don't have to wait till the joints actually glued before you can add the splines, which makes it so you don't have to clamp it when you're done. I'll just push it together and add my spline. And there we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue around this and then I'll use some clamps and tighten it down. Again, I need to make sure I figure out which side the plastic and the board line up like, and that's 
it right there. We'll go ahead and stick this on top and clamp it down. We'll come back after this is dried. With this done, we now need to add a window, which will obviously allow us to turn it as well as place our bits on it. I'm gonna use an inch and a half, and I'm just gonna put it right here in the corner. I want the center to be right about there, so I'm gonna use an awl and leave a mark. Now before I attach the plastic to the top of the box, I wanna go through and add measurements to each one of these blades. So I'm gonna start with the letter four because that first part is four sixteenths and I'm gonna go all the way down. So four sixteenths, five sixteenths, six sixteenths, seven sixteenths. I'm not gonna add the sixteenth part on, just the first number. I could stamp this. Instead, I'll just heat this up and use it to burn the number into each one of these blades. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of doing a little division to find the right size that I'm looking for. Of course, you don't have to do it this way. You can take a fine point marker and you can just write in the, the right number, but this will work for me. I once again, line up my marks. I still have them right here on the outside. I know that this goes on like that. I'm going to add screws on the corners here. Now you could attach yours with glue if you want, but I'm gonna be adding some spacers underneath that will help lift it up to where I need it to be. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the holes in the plastic. Because each one of these widths is about three quarters of an inch on each corner, I'm gonna go ahead and measure in at three eighths on each point. So my first point's gonna be right there. Just gonna go ahead and add some tape so it doesn't move around. got my screw here and I need to make sure that I can get the screw through the plastic. I don't want any threads in it. I want to be able to have this flush inside of the plastic and again I don't want any threads because threads can cause it to crack. I'll go ahead and add my spiral. And then the spacer washer, which again is at 0 0.05. Now I'll line up my acrylic, add my machine screw. Now do not use a power tool to do this. I'll add the nut to the bottom. And there we go. Let's see how it works. Now this can be used in a couple different ways. Of course, there's a thumb knob on the back. So I'm gonna use a hole here. And I'll set this to be, let's set it to 5 eighths, which is the number 10 on here. And now I'll go ahead and just drop this down until I hit that number 10 blade. And right there, there we go. That's easy. 5 eighths. The bit is 5 eighths away from the bottom of the plate here. Now the second way to use it, let's set it for 7 sixteenths. I think it's a little bit easier doing it the other way, but in case you ever have to do it this way, I'll raise my plate up, and there we go. It is now 7 16 away from the base plate. It's pretty simple, and let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. Tell me if this is something that you might make, or if it was interesting to watch. Thank you for watching.